Despite having two ex eyes one members in the group, I've still had to follow the company's rules and lessons in order to debut. From classes on selfies and how to do TikToks, to actually being locked into dark rooms so they could get used to flashing lights, these are the crazy things that I were forced to do. Selfie classes. Trainees in general have to take a lot of classes before they're even considered for debut. Singing, dancing, rapping, foreign languages, and even behavior classes. However, I've members revealed something that they had to learn before they debuted, and it honestly honestly blew my mind. We all know that a big part of the idol's jobs is to look prim and proper all the time. Their makeup and hair must be perfect at all times since they're in front of the cameras basically 24-7, and that even includes taking selfies. I guess the fact that they can take amazing selfies from every angle at every moment doesn't exactly come naturally to them. On April 14th, MMTG released their new episode with the IVE members. The members in the show host JJ talked about the period when they were trainees and the rules that they had to follow before debuting. During the episode, shared, when you visit Starship, there's a curriculum. Then the members revealed that they actually took lessons on how to take selfies before they debuted. I can't believe idols have to get trained to take pictures of themselves now. But what do they need these classes for and how do they even work? Eugene explained that she was actually really bad at taking selfies even before being an IVE member. But the company had a plan to solve this problem too. In order for Eugene to improve at posing for selfies, she had to send a few pictures of herself daily to the company's staff members for evaluation. She went on to explain, in the first period, we received selfie lessons. I was so bad at taking selfies that I would take two every day and get them checked. It was my daily mission. I don't know how bad she was initially that she had to take two selfies on the daily, but she explained that her skills eventually improved over the years. Yes, the classes went on for years. Though it seems that they worked overall because the members take some gorgeous selfies, and it's just surprising to see how the trainee rules have changed over the years. Back then, you only had to be good at singing and dancing, but now companies require you to take good selfies too? But this isn't even the craziest part of it all. Teaching manners. Though I doubt any companies would ever debut trainees who don't behave properly, idols need to be extremely well-mannered so they won't be perceived negatively by the public or fans. They either need to be nice and pleasant to everyone or they might not get the chance to debut at all, so companies are strict at teaching them all the right manners. At Starship, they especially pay attention to teaching how to be at their best when they're in front of the cameras. They have strict policies regarding idols' behavior and etiquette, and they seem to be doing a great job overall. The idols under Starship have rarely had any attitude scandals. Well, unless it's Wonyoung, because that girl will get called a diva for even breathing and existing. She seems like a nice person overall, but even if she wasn't, the company rules would have forced her to keep a pleasant persona around the media and fans. The company said so themselves. An official from Starship Entertainment revealed, our trainees have to follow rules like not swearing, not slurring speech, and greeting people with loud, clear voices, which is reasonable enough. They continued, before each team debuts, we offer specialized courses on giving interviews, which include speaking coherently and responding to unexpected questions. These are lessons the IVE members have attended in order to present a perfect image to the public. Though I doubt Starship had to teach them much. The members seem like the loveliest people to be around. The TikTok lessons. Along with taking classes on how to take selfies, I've also shared that they took other lessons on how to get the audience's attention outside of the stage. But these classes were so unexpected that even Wonyoung and Eugene were surprised by the reveal. Since Wonyoung and Eugene were idols before and were pretty experienced in the industry, the company already knew that they didn't have to be exposed on social media as much. As for the other members, Starship had to find a way to get the general public interested in them by marketing them as relatable Gen Z idols, and what better way to do this than TikTok? TikTok already has the K-pop industry in a tight grip, to the point that companies are making the group's choreos easier in order to make them into TikTok challenges, but it seems like they have taken it a step further. The IVE members, apart from Wonyoung and Yujin, revealed that they would actually send their TikTok videos to the company and get feedback from the teachers. They said, I would film TikToks and get them inspected. When I sent them by myself from my home, I would get feedback like, at this part, let's try a facial expression like this. You even had to add in the effects yourself. I would edit and add in the sparkling hearts myself and practice like that. I've learned their lesson well because they're very active on TikTok. The girls mostly post different types of videos with their comeback song Love Dive playing in the background, but they've managed to gather 1.7 million followers on on their official account and 21.7 million likes on their videos as of April 30th. I can't wait to see them go viral with their videos. Fake it till you make it. Like every other entertainment industry, the K-pop industry is very fake and manufactured. Everything from the stories idols tell to their very personalities might be faked by the companies. Usually when one trainee has a personality trait that makes them stand out among others, the companies then build the idol's whole persona around it. If an idol is mean looking, they try to make fans believe that they're savage. Or if an idol is bubbly, 
Lily, they try to make them seem like the idol smiles in their sleep too. It's a marketing tactic that has been used for ages and will be used for many more. Even if the idols are somewhat sincere, some parts of their personality are still amplified for the public to relate to. Won Young, unarguably the most popular member of the group, has been accused of faking her personality more than once. People who follow I've think that Starship has told Won Young to put on this cute persona for the camera. Someone even wrote, I love Won Young, but her personality comes off as really fake to me, especially during the interview she had with Yeti, Young, etc. She used Blackpink's fake Aegyo voice to act cute to other girls. It was so cringe. I don't know, I feel like she's faking her entire personality to come off cute. Based on this, people are also wondering what other IVE members have manufactured public personas by Starship, and whether the quote-unquote tight relationship between the members is all in the sake of appearing close for the fans and the public. What do you think of this? Secret information. Starship doesn't have the greatest record with faking stuff. Though it isn't as serious as faking entire personality traits or friendships between the members, Starship still keeps lying about certain aspects of their idols, and there are many proven instances. It's not unusual for companies to lie about the idols' ages, but none of them have ever been caught as often as Starship. It started when Pora, Hyolin, and Soyuz fans found out that they have been celebrating their favorite idols' birthdays on the wrong date for seven whole years. It turns out that Starship changed their birth year and date so the members would seem younger in the eyes of the public. They also changed the birthdays of the Uju Sonya members to match the concept of the group. The Uju Sonya members each represent a zodiac sign, so if two members had the same sign, Starship would change their birthdays to fit another sign that was quote unquote empty. So based on these instances, fans are wondering if every information presented to us by the company was 100% true. What if they're making the members change their birth years to appear younger or older? Especially since there was that whole controversy with Iso being too young to debut, what if she's even younger but Starship changed her public age to 14 so she would appear older and get less backlash? There has also always been suspicions that Won Young isn't actually fully Korean. These suspicions started ever since she was a Produce 48 contestant and her profile was released to the public for the first time. Won Young had stated that she was part Taiwanese. Her name was even listed as Chang Yuan Ying. The rumors got spread even further once a Taiwanese media outlet posted an article about her saying that her father was Taiwanese while her mother was Korean. The rumors were never addressed and it's no surprise that Starship is avoiding talking about them even now. Considering the tension between South Korea and China, it wouldn't be the smartest move if Starship just declared that the most popular member of their most popular group is actually half Taiwanese. This has made fans believe that Starship is making Won Young stay private about her family and roots as much as possible. I mean, can you name literally anything about Won Young's private life other than some very small unnecessary details? Though this might be the smartest thing that Starship is making her do. The poor girl gets too much hate as it is. Imagine how much netizens would escalate the situation if she was actually exposed to be Taiwanese. I don't know if she would be able to handle it. In your opinion, what's the craziest thing I were forced to do in order to debut? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.